Morning YouTube. It's uh, Friday the 2nd of October, just about 5 to 10. And a uh, particularly special day for me today. It's my birthday, 66. Who would have thought I'd last this long? Um, one or two things have been happening just lately. Um, Leeds, as you probably know now, is uh, back in uh, lockdown restrictions which basically means that we're not allowed to meet up in each other's houses. Um, we're not allowed to socialize in that sort of way. There's, there's various other uh, rules and regulations, but basically what it means is stay apart as much as you can, which kind of sort of makes sense. Um, we're not out of the woods yet with this virus thing. There's a lot still to be done. There's a lot of uh, work being carried out on on um, vaccines and the like but we're nowhere near ready for that yet i'm going to be booking my um, free flu jab and i would recommend that anybody else uh, that qualifies gets it done as soon as they can it's uh, just another bit of protection um, it's bad enough with the virus you don't want to be worrying about getting the flu as well As a birthday treat, I've bought myself a new um, piece of kit. Uh, you might be able to see it here on the helmet. I've got a brand new Ghost XL uh, from Drift, which has uh, the extended battery life. And I've put in a, a 128 gigabyte uh, chip, so it should record forever and a day. Hopefully any long trips should all go on it in one go, unlike the Blackpool thing. <laughs> um, I'll show you some photographs of it now. And uh, with a bit of luck, it'll stand me in good stead. A little birthday treat to me, from me. Uh, a couple of other things I wanted to mention. Um, it's now October and we're into autumn and winter is coming as somebody in a TV show once said and um, start thinking about preparations for uh, riding in autumn and winter and a couple of things to, to sort of bear in mind. Obviously um, as time marches on when the sun does come up we're going to have uh, sessions where you're going to be getting you know low sunshine and that's going to be right into your eyes if you're headed in that direction. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of. You could go around a corner and find that you're blinded by the sun. So just be aware, be safe. Um, other things to look out for, of course, as it's now autumn, there's going to be leaves. They're going to be wet. The roads are going to be wet or wetter than they have been. Um, so it's going to affect your braking distances. So bear that in mind as well. Make sure your tyres are up to scratch. Make sure your tyre pressures are as they should be check your brakes, make sure everything works that keeps you upright and safe. A um, couple of other things to bear in mind obviously is later on this month the clocks change and we're going to go back uh, an hour so that means that uh, it's going to be darker mornings and of course as time progresses it's going to be darker mornings and darker evenings so the riding time is going to be reduced if you're one that uh, prefers to just ride in daylight. If you do get caught out and it gets dark, uh, make sure that all your lights are working uh, properly. Your indicators, your brakes, your headlight, your main beam, etc. Uh, if you have any driving lamps, make sure they're all clean and, and working properly. Uh, the last thing you want is to find yourself in the, you know, in, in the dark and uh, with the poor illuminations and uh, somebody coming around the corner and not seeing you till it's too late. Heaven forbid. I've gone over the bike these last few days and I've checked all my light bulbs are, are in working order. I have spares, I keep them here in the garage. But uh, what I intend to do is I intend to put those spares in a bag and keep them in the saddle bag uh, with the relevant uh, screwdrivers, etc., so that I can get to the light bulbs and change them if I need to. Uh, it's just something to bear in mind, something to just keep handy. You never know. If a bulb goes out, you don't want to be 
scratting around trying to find a light to fit it. Um, not worse than a headlight going out. Obviously if it's water cooled make sure your radiator is topped up. This is all fairly obvious stuff. Radiator, oil, that kind of thing. Uh, if you have heated grips, good luck, that'd be great. I wish I had. But to be honest, if I had heated grips fitted on here, it would mean I would lose these very nice um, grips that are on there with the nice chrome ends, uh, which I find, you know, perfectly comfortable and, and I don't want to really change them because it wouldn't be in keeping with the style of bike. So what I have is I have uh, three types of gloves, some very lightweight summer gloves some uh, mid-range gloves which are these that I've been using uh, more recently uh, by Alpine Star. They've got padding in the knuckles um, and they're leather on the, ins uh, on the palm as you can see and the textile on the outside. Very, very good actually, quite waterproof uh, and very comfortable. But the really cold weather I have a pair of gloves by Goldtop which are leather and merino wool lined. Now they're very good, uh, they keep your hands nice and toasty warm for quite a long time and you have to be riding for, for hours before it starts to really you know feel through that your hands are cold or getting cold. Um, there is a bit of a trade-off with those gloves uh, obviously with them being lined is that they're a little bit bulkier than, uh, than you know the intermediate type of gloves. Although having said that, I can still operate the controls quite well. You, know, I st you still have the feel for the uh, switches and dials and what have you. So everything's okay in that respect. And if the worst comes to the worst, I can always drop my hand down over the uh, exhaust and just have a little bit of a warm. <laughs> um, but generally what, I've, what I do is get, it gets to around about uh, mid-November uh, when the weather starts to uh, turn and we've got a lot of salt on the roads and uh, there's more likely to be uh, the odd snow flurry or, or heavy rain, that sort of thing. The salt that's on the roads uh, when the gritters have been out basically eats chrome. So once they really start spreading, then that's when I put the bike away for the winter. And the preparations that I make for that is obviously I'll run the petrol down as much as I can so that I've no more than about a litre or so in there because um, I don't like the petrol going stale over the few months that it's locked away and um, check the oil check the water check the tires and one other thing I read somewhere um, which is perhaps a good idea is to occasionally move the bike up and down in the garage to put it in a slightly different position so that the weight of the bike isn't on the same spot on the tires all the time and causing what I don't know you might describe as a pressure sore. Um, it just keeps the, the, the tyres evenly balanced I suppose. Um, it was an idea that I read about and I thought well why not, <laughs> you can't do any harm. I also have the Optimate 2 battery charger which um, once the colder weather really gets going I'll have the bike hooked up to that. Um, and more particularly once I've got the bike uh, stored uh, I'll have it hooked up to that on a more permanent basis. Um, the final things that I will do on it is uh, give the thing a really good clean thoroughly saddlebags off, seat off, everything get it get really into it, give it a thorough thorough cleaning and a complete drying off. Uh, some people have got those um, bike dryers, it's like a giant hair dryer sort of thing which uh, look very useful actually I might, I might consider getting one um, but basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll thoroughly dry it off leather it all down as much as I can get every bit of moisture off that I can um, give it all a good polishing and then I shall with an oily rag uh, WD-40 on a, on a bit of uh, cloth rub over all the uh, chrome just to keep uh, just a, a smear of oil over it, stop any uh, condensation getting to it. And, uh, and then I'll just put my Oxford cover over the bike and she'll sit in here. I do have a little electric heater which um, I may actually bring into the garage. Uh, I'm going to read up on that and find out whether it's a good idea to have a heater in the garage 
or whether that would just cause more condensation I'm not sure yet uh, if you know let me know uh, and if I you know if it's a good idea then I'll go for it if it's not then I'll leave it out uh, other than that um, apart from you know when it's really snowing and what have you uh, I should be just simply popping in just to make sure that um, you know if the tires need moving up and down the garage then I'll do that otherwise I'll just give it a quick look over make sure there's no rust spots forming anywhere and um, basically tuck her in for the night and leave her there um, I think that's about it really I can't think of anything else I need to say at the moment um, just uh, I will be doing a few more of these garage chats from time to time especially once uh, the riding um, season is over and um, I may just reduce the number of uh, videos that I put out rather than uh, two a week down to just maybe one a week or one a fortnight that's about it for today um, all I would say is um, as usual look after yourselves look after the people around you don't forget the two meter rule and wear a mask as often as you can if you go into the shops or whatever make sure you've got your mask on properly over your mouth and nose and um, until next time bye for now mm -hmm.